All right, guys, so we're going to be doing another little bit of a build. I'm not going to be covering every aspect of it, but uh, you can see I already got some work done. It's very basic so, so far. So this is going to be a shelf in the middle of a cage, and we're going to fit heating underneath it. So this sort of lip here is going to cover where the um, cage is with a heat emitter so that the snake can actually get warm underneath. It's just going to fit it there so the snake can like come underneath this and get warm from a heat emitter. I'm going to mount it about 60 centimeters from the substrate floor, which is a, a pretty good height. And then it doubles as a shelf. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm obviously going to shape this because this looks terrible. This is just polyurethane foam that you get in the spray can. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it a little bit. That's obviously a very messy job. We can't cover that um, in the video. My camera will never be the same again. I've got a room where I do all the grinding and carving and stuff. And then we're going to waterproof and make this look like a rock. So the heat that's coming from below is going to make a nice warm spot. And we're going to have thick substrate here. This is going to hold water. That's how waterproof we're going to make it. Um, so it's also going to help with adding humidity if we add a little bit of water to the top here we spray it a bit damp then that's going to add humidity to the, to the environment now and again but also you know doubles as a heat, a heat pad now it's mostly going to have a hot spot in the middle so I'm going to do a little test with actually putting a aluminium sheet in here now that might sound like a cooking plate but aluminium is very good for spreading heat so rather than just having a high focused hot point there it's actually going to be dispersed throughout this area so and then also i mean the substrate is going to be like this thick so it's going to just be a nice gentle heat the snake can come lie on top or it can go underneath so yeah let's see how it all comes together and then we'll fit it in the cage and see how it looks okay so we've just done about 10 or 15 minutes of shaping just to get rid of all the rounded edges and stuff i mean you can see the board here but that's my plan on leaving how far out in that i should go although i did cut some back and plus i mean once it's all coated and it'll look like a rock or something anyway we'll see and on this side i left a little bit more rounded um not so much detailed so we'll see what happens there so we're probably going to just fiberglass the top quickly that's obviously just going to make it very nice and waterproof. You know, if I just use a certain type of the epoxy resin or whatever, it's going to eventually it could crack from the heat and then it could leak down through. So we're just going to probably put a few layers of fiberglass up here. I'm just using some off cuts and seeing what I can work with. Probably got to obviously pat a little more in the corners and stuff like that. So, yeah. But uh, so we'll see what this looks like once we've got all the final layers on. So just finished the sort of base coat. So now obviously because we used fiberglass resin and the mat on top here, this uh, fiberglass resin firstly is toxic. So this is why we're going to have to coat this whole piece with an aquarium safe epoxy type resin. So obviously it's gone nice and hard. We've gone all around it and we threw some sand on as well. With our epoxy and all. That's gonna obviously be shaved and what have you. But it's giving a, a little bit of a look now. The final coat, we thought we'll give it all the detail and everything. Not obviously gonna make it as coarse. This is like sandpaper, but you can see it's really nice and hard already. So here's the finished product. Um, it came out quite nice. It's not my best work. But you can see we got some pretty cool detail. So that's obviously where I did most of the shaping. And then this side, which I kind of didn't do much shaping. I just want to see if it had a different look. It's not going to be so visual. It also doesn't look too bad and then it's nice and waterproof so this will actually hold water on top 
not that we want it like holding water but it's gonna get damp and wet and stuff and that's obviously wood wouldn't handle that and I've got a little bit of runs with the paint but ugh, it is what it is or maybe fit some moss hanging over it or something it'll look pretty cool yeah but it's mostly for the functionality of the shelf so let's get it fitted and see how it looks all right guys so just a quick look at how i've mounted the shelf you see it's just an aluminium bracket and then I pin the wiring down because you don't want the snake going over that and ripping it out and then we've got a nice 150 watt heat emitter here with a protective cage and you must make sure obviously that the screws are not too long that they're going to go through the board into the top because then you're going to have a hole where water gets in and that's just going to be very problematic okay a couple more there and then i've just got a support pole that i've just placed in here i might actually pin this branch up or something now the glass is all dirty we just put it in and needs a good clean and all but yeah so quite a big unit that should work quite nicely i should have actually put some more of a um, cover over here but i was worried where this branch is going to end up so i didn't fiddle too much there but yeah it's cool and then she can sit nicely perched up there very cool so i just need to actually fit the probe for the thermostat or the dimmerstat i'm just gonna have the probe hanging in here so uh, the heating's been running for 24 hours. So I see uh, we've got 40, 46, 47. Okay, so yeah, there's probably where it is, 46 degrees. So I mean, that's pretty hot. That can actually burn an animal. But I mean, we have cages where you have the heat emitter underneath and then the next animal sits on top. And a lot of the time, you know, the substrate, especially with like husk and things, it loses a lot of temperature through that. So, I mean, we're going to fill the soil and everything up this high. So by the time it gets through, it's going to be a lot cooler. I mean, yes, okay, a snake can move this away, but that's not often the case. I mean, when the temperatures are comfortable enough, you know, she can go down there, get nice and warm. Whereas like a heat pad that's not regulated, you know, the air is still pretty cool. And the snakes shuffle down and they get on that heat pad, it can burn them. So... I also want to do a test, so we're looking at 40, 40, almost 50 degrees in some places, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty darn hot. Okay, so it's something we'll work on and see how it goes with all the substrate and everything. Right, so I've got an aluminium plate underneath here, you'll be able to see. There, the problem is... A lot of temp guns, they don't actually pick up the temperature of um, reflective surfaces very well. So you have to have fancy ones. You see it's got different modes as well, but this one's not too fancy. So I've just put a very, very thin layer of peat. And uh, we've got 20, 29 now. That's already quite nice. But it could still be heating and things like that. But it's definitely made a huge difference when I feel it. And then also the aluminium plate's not totally flush. When there's more weight on it or the snake sits on it, it's going to get warmer. But it definitely helps to spread the heat quite a bit. And again, we're still going to be packing quite a lot on here. So I'm going to play around with it and make sure everything's 100%. And then what I can also do is put insulation between the, the bottom of the board and the aluminium plate so like a filter media for fish tanks you see it can move a little bit there's like hollow spaces and stuff like that even air spaces are going to help to dissipate that heat and i've also got another idea which we maybe we'll cover in another video one day um, for doing a, a hollow middle so there's that air space and then i can actually control the temperature on top with little things but i don't want to give away too much so yeah, just gonna pack some substrate on here and then get her back in. Looks quite cool with the moss, it's nice and soft when she wants to come over. This is all probably gonna go all over the place, but we'll see. This is Goldie and she is an albino. For those of you Americans, albino. Uh, she is a white-faced tiger. 
She just tried to eat me, so she's just gonna give her a little tappy tappy. It's not food time. <clears throat> no, she's sometimes a little difficult with the feet. Now I'm gonna have to get up onto a steppy ladder here. Sometimes she takes quite a lot of convincing that it's not food, but I can see now that she's hey, hey, hey. She's a funny one, I tell you. You can see she was looking a little interested there again. Okay, so I just want to just touch her and let her know, hey, it's not foodie time. She'll probably try and chow me or something. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Very, very inquisitive. I've got to get a little more handling on her. All right, so she is loving the shelf. Her body temperature is 26.3. So I just want to move her a little bit so that we can actually see what the temperature is doing underneath her there. Oh no, she's a funny one, eh? She's trying to like push against my hand and everything. She really wants to eat something. Okay, let's see if we can shoot in there. 28 degrees, that is absolute perfection. That's exactly what I want. So this is working really, really well. She looks like she's ready for her first meal, obviously. She is an absolute nutter. But yeah, since we've sick, she's just coming for me again. It's not food time. I really don't want her to just see the warmth of my hand. So normally you just give him a little tap and then that's it. It's over and done with. But she keeps stalking me. Got to be very careful with this snake. Okay. Or is that just a little bit of a poop mark? Uh, it's a little piece of moss or something. Oh, so she's a beautiful snake. And yeah, since we put her in here, she came down to her time to the bottom here where we've got also 28 exactly what I want that's working really well so she first curled up in the bottom here and then at night time she came up top and she has not moved they just love their shells although we're not seeing what's happening early in the morning she is a nocturnal species but yeah this is working out really really well Okay, and soon she'll probably need another upgrade. Cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video on this build. I'm pretty happy with how it all came out. And uh, yeah, we'll get on to the next one now.